Akshay wants to review the data log and we'll show you what that means. So, the car is done. So, we're going to go into Akshay's office, which is pretty, at least 20 degrees cooler than the dino cell where the car is here. So, yep, that's the car. Now, they're going to work on pulling the straps off and pulling the car off the dino. While we come here and look at Mr. Akshay and analyze the logs. So, we can keep it here. Okay, so now Akshay is putting up his giant screen some AC first. with some AC first and we are going to look at the logs and see these are the parameters we have logged on the dyno. So, so stage 2 is not going to happen on this car because the GPF and the EPA regulations, so there is no stage 2 map. I mean, not from APR, Revo or any of the big tuners, the smaller tuners do have maps, but I am not too confident on their boost management strategies. They do make power, but on, on these motors, it is not, I mean, unless I figure out a way to spoof the car's GPS sensor, I'm not going to do, do another map. So maybe we'll go a bigger turbo once I'm bored of this. But for now, this car says stage one. Stage two doesn't make any sense. For the price of stage two, I can easily get IS-38 and put a big turbo on it and perfectly it, it works perfectly because one of my friends, Bharat Sumani, he has IS-38 on the same car and it runs like crazy. So, big turbo is not happening. GPF delete, I don't know. I mean, it depends. We'll see how best we can pull it. Ideally, what, what, what Akshay and I think is that if, the, if, we do a, if we do manage to found, find a GPF delete and spoof the GPF sensor, we'll still keep the stock cat in place because the catalytic converter is required. It gives me enough back pressure to spool my turbo faster. And we should be making the difference in torque from the from the 230. We'll make up the difference in stage one. And I think the the map itself should auto tune and or, and bump up the torque or we torque it's building. So what okay. we're looking at first thing we do when we open a log is see if the car is fired. Yes. Right? We have four cylinders per thousand revs at zero. Um, if I go into just single occurrences, hmm. we will have one cylinder which has one. Yeah, now, this start. could have been due to the cold start. This could have been. No, it getting, the car. This could have been due to me getting on the pedal on a gear on a metal roller, so hmm. the car does bounce about a bit, and yeah. the lock sensor is essentially a microphone, right? So, which is why we look at it for thousand reps. If it doesn't happen repeatedly, um, not happening. Right. Yeah, so misfire counter for zero. thousand reps is zero. Which so is no so Next is thing we are going to look at is we are going to look at the intake air temperature. Oh yeah. So this is where things get interesting. Um, the reason we do more than one run on the dyno is the IAT actually drops as air flows through the intercooler, which you can see here. So at thirteen hundred RPM, we started off at fifty seven odd degrees. And at 2800 RPM, we actually dropped all the way down to 48 degrees. Sorry, 47 degrees. Yeah, 47 degrees at 3400 RPM. Right? This area is what your upgraded intercooler buys you. Right? This ability to drop the temperature as air is going is what your inter upgraded intercooler buys you. Of course, the stock intercooler we would again see steps, but we will see this bottom portion for as long. Yeah, it will right. just keep on going up and consecutive runs, it will keep on going up. At our highest, we are at 49 degrees Celsius on the IIT. You can read over here. Yes, and on an ambient temperature. Ambient temperature is 43 degrees. So we are 6 degrees above ambient, which is not bad at all. Yeah. Which is actually brilliant. So thank you, Integrated Engineering, for the intercooler. And Karan Chah for getting it over here. <laughs> so cheap. Next thing what we're going to see hmm. is sorry. The next thing that we're going to see is lock correction angle, right? None. And no, we have one cylinder. So we have one cylinder which has which is an outlier, which had minus two point six degrees of knock correction. That was the start again. That was one yeah. misfire and the car corrected. And it fell. This is between three thousand one hundred and three thousand two hundred. So yes. this could be multiple things. Um, this could be Same thing. random. This could up. be. Um, Plug just having a 
fractional difference in gap, right? Nothing yeah. that I would be concerned about. Um, these engines happily run minus three, minus four degrees knock correction, right? Knock correction is not the same as knock. So yeah, knock right? correction means that how much the car reduced the timing angle if it sends the knock. And this is our boost, our request versus actual. So below 2000 RPM, our turbo is not spooling. So this is what a lot of people call lag, right? Even though we are requesting the turbo to make stuff, it just says, nah, I'm not doing it, right? <laughs> After that, over here, we see the boost actually overshoot our request. This is where the PID control comes in. So it slowly reins it in. You can see it go up, down, up, down, up, down, and then it eventually meets. And at the top end, where our PID control is much tighter, because we can't have over boost at the top end. You can see it follows perfectly. Yeah. And this is very key. This is where your APR map or Revo map or any oh, kind of map. This is our stock run. The stock run? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Top run, obviously. Top map will do this. Right. Now yes. we're going to open our tune run. Uh, run do, do we have Harry? Welcome. Welcome, Harry. So, no. Yes, we have the temperature overlay from a stock and a stock intercooler and the upgrade intercooler. That's on a different post. I think I have the whole series of intercooler posts. It should be there. Yeah, this monitor is huge. I know. Yeah, see. So that is the width of his head and that's the width of the monitor. So yeah, this is a very crazy monitor. So you needed to look at logs. It just makes life so much easier. I can see right from 1500 to 6500 RPM. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Now we're going to look at our misfire counter for 1000 reps on our tune. Okay, that was the stock one, okay. Yes, that was the one you saw earlier was stock. And again, we have zero. So zero misfires on a 98 round map running 100 octane fuel, stage one. Right. Zero misfires. And this is usually where the misfire happens because the car hasn't run yet on the street and the map may request aggressive stuff. Holy crap, that's very nice. So we are back to the ID. Now we are back to our IITs. Hmm. So this time we started off at 65 degrees IIT. Um, the reason for starting off so high is because this was our second run. If I open our first run, but uh, if we forgot to stop the log, that's why I'm not opening yeah. that, that would be a very messy log. Hmm. Um, this is a back-to-back -back run. Yeah. So we were idling the car for long. And right. in a sand cell dyno with hot air blowing in. That's perfectly understandable. Right. But, but the way the trend is what's important. Again, we come down to 50 degrees. Yeah, peak right. boost about 3500 with a peak boost and it stays flat 50 degrees for almost the entire run at 6350 rpm it goes up by 1 degree. Yep. Right, so on a tuned car we are doing 7 degrees above ambient, stock car we are doing 6 degrees above ambient. Three, uh, 40, 43, 46, 3 degrees. 3 degrees above ambient, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So on a tuned car we are 7 degrees above ambient. It's not bad at all. This is fantastic. This is why we need an intercooler. Right. Especially in these black cars. The Gen 3. Now let's look at how much more boost we are making. Okay. This is going to be interesting. This is the... So we are making about 2.3, 2.4 bar. Yeah, for the peak of the sensor, right? Yeah. And... Yeah. Holding the red line. So we are doing about peak of 2.3 bar. And then it's less for 2.4, yeah, 2.379. Yeah, 2.4 bar peak, but that's only peak. That's when it's cooling off, and then the boost correction comes in and kind of holds it at about so 1.8 bar till red, one two bar till red line, right? That's about two. 1.9, 1.95, yeah. and then a red line actually goes up. Yeah, so it's bar. actually holding the. What's happening here is that this is where the difference between the 230 and the 240 have come in. The 230 starts dropping the boost after 4500 RPM. No matter what map you're running, unless you're running a map which is designed to hold that boost with a big enough turbo. On the 245, the boost boost is being held till red line, which is where it's making the extra power. As we saw on the dyno graph, that beyond 4500, 4000, 4500 RPM is when the power changes. Yeah. And we need temperature. Wow. So, cool temperature on this run started off at 90 degrees. This is the second run, right? Yes. Yes. And as we ran, so at about 4,300 is when we ran out of thermal capacity. 
and then we see it slowly ramp up and at the end of our run we were at 104 degrees celsius which is pretty toasty no but that's okay that's when a closed dyno cell right on the road i would expect at least five degrees six degrees less. yeah 95 96 is where my cool temperatures generally will be even though the Volkswagen dials to 90 they are doing an average. Oh, so yeah. So over here, when we were at 104, the dial switch has showed 90. Yeah. So it'll show so 90. The Volkswagen dial is as good as an on-off switch. Your car yeah. is cold and your car is blown ahead gas. Yeah. There's nothing in between. That's true. The, but the oil temperature actually oil temperature, works. oil temperature works. The coolant temperature is basically taking a timed average of all the readings that it's getting. see what ignition we're running. Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah that'll be very interesting. Ignition angle is something where we actually make the power. Yeah. So we are running so, about... We're running all cylinders are running about the same. We can see a little bit small corrections here. Yeah, that's all. Uh, at the close to the red line, so I say 6,000 RPM, we are running 7 degrees of advance. Yeah. And this is on a car which is which is where the tune hasn't been adapted yet. So as I run the car on the road, the tune will adapt. And Let's really quickly see what the stock car runs yeah. like. Stock car runs over 12 degrees, so it's, it's lowing the timing to accommodate the boost. Correct. Let's just for fun see what the stock car runs. Okay. We, so we have got this giant monitor to scale our dyno, uh, all our logs on. So you're, so, so you're watching the, uh, the timing angle. We are looking at the timing angle of the stock car stock map versus the APR stage one ninety eight run map. So right, right up at top, it goes to about eleven degrees. Yeah. But Mid range, the APR map is actually running slightly more timing, about a degree more of timing. Yeah, and I get that's because the, it's artificially choked. Correct. These these engines from the factory are the same as the what do you call the special edition GTI engines, which make about 298 PS. So Volkswagen is obviously choking these artificially. So you can see it's going up and it's holding and it's coming down. Good. Okay. So we will get ready. All right, guys, that's it. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. And Akshay, thank you so much for your tune. And thank you, APR. And thank you, GG. And thank you to the ball Look at the ball Look at this guy. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. All right, guys, bye.